Hey YouTubers, this is Lonnie Clark again, Nuts for Art. I apologize for taking so long to get back to you. I've been super slimy and busy with work. But uh, I'm going to read a little bit more of this book, Poison Power, by Dr. John Goffman and Arthur Tamplin. We are on Chapter 4. The title of it is, Is, Ra is Any Radiation Safe? Page 91. When the industrial application of a technology has a poisonous environmental byproduct, clearly a primary requirement is to understand the consequent public health hazard. Past experience shows that at any point in medical history, we are unlikely to know enough to assess such hazards with accuracy. But the consequences of understanding these hazards, especially genetic hazards, can be so grave that we must be extremely conservative in assessing them. An error on the side of conservatism in estimating a danger can be, at worst, a delaying nuisance for the promoters of the technology. An error on the side of optimism leading to some underestimation of the true hazard can it be extremely costly to the human species? We can always later allow more exposure to a poison such as radioactivity if we learn that it can be tolerated. We cannot undo genetic and chromosomal damage from overdose of poison already consumed. For nuclear, for nuclear electricity generation, the byproduct poison is radioactivity or radiation itself. Any of the hundreds of radioactive substances produced in the course of all phases of nuclear electricity generation can be harmful to man. From uranium mining through to, through to disposal of, of astronomical quantities of radioactive waste. I should read that again. Any of, the, any of the hundreds of radioactive substances can be produced in the course of all phases of nuclear electricity generation can be harmful to man. From uranium mining through to disposal of, disposal, disposal of astronomical quantities of radioactive waste. Wow, that was a tongue tire. It doesn't matter whether the radiation is external to the body or provided by one or more radioactive compounds that have gained access to the body through air, food, or water. What counts for any particular organ is the total absorption of radiation energy, which is measured in rads or millirads. A thousand millirads equals one rad. The only possible way to get a truly safe standard a definite number of rads or millirads assigned to a particular tissue or organ would be to know beyond any reasonable doubt that within that amount no biological effect would occur. We can state unequivocally and without fear of contradiction that no one has ever produced evidence that any specific amount of radiation will be without harm. Indeed, quite the opposite appears to be the case. So much for the hormesis theory. All of the evidence from both experimental animals and from humans leads us to expect that even the smallest quantities of ionizing radiation produce harm, both to this generation of humans and future generations. Furthermore, it appears that Progressively greater harm accrues in direct proportion to the amount of radiation received by the various body tissues and organs. It came as a great shock to us in the course of our study of radiation hazards to man that nuclear electricity generation has been developed under the false illusion that there exists some safe amount of radiation. This unsupportable concept is surely one of the gravest condemnations of nuclear electricity generation. Obviously, any engineering development proceeding under an illusion of a wide margin of safety is fraught with serious danger. 
What is more, the false illusion of a safe amount of radiation has pervaded all the highest circles concerned with the development and promotion of nuclear electric power, which is probably why Senator, ex-Senator Jim Webb tonight in the Democratic debate said, nuclear safe, it's safe and it's clean, fucking idiot. Besides being a war hawk, that's another good reason to never vote for that guy for any reason. Like, no matter what, no matter where you live, don't vote for Jim Webb. Back to the book. <clears throat> the Congress, the nuclear manufacturing industry, the electricity, the electric utility industry have all been led to believe that some safe amount of radiation does indeed exist. They were hoping to develop this industry with exposures below this limit. The limit we now know is anything but safe. Before describing the widely pervasive nature of this serious misunderstanding of the radiation hazard problem at such top levels in industry and government, it is important to, care, to establish carefully that we put the integrity, sincerity, and motives of no one into question. Really? <laughs> huh. I got to know. This is probably why they failed. It's probably why we have nuclear energy all over the fucking place. Okay, let's read that one again. That's hard for me to read. Before describing the widely pervasive nature of this serious misunderstanding of the radiation hazard problem at such top levels of industry and government, it is important to establish carefully that we put the integrity, sincerity, and motives of no one into question. Undoubtedly, the scientists, the engineers, and the executive powers involved, as well as the congressmen, were simply misled in their belief that some safe amount of radiation truly exists. Well, the question is, who misled them? Somebody had to mislead them, and that person, their integrity has to be questioned. It was the result of some inadequate observations involving persons exposed to radium salts industrially. That is bullshit. I don't buy that. Numerous reputable scientists had long discounted these inadequate observations. All of the national and international standard-setting bodies had also refused to accept this inadequate evidence as a supposedly safe amount of radiation. And I agree. I don't think they bought it either. So. Subtitle. A multi-billion dollar industry of a dangerous premise. How under such circumstances it is, is it even conceivable that so many important industrial and governmental leaders were so totally and seriously misled, misled to the point of launching a multi-billion dollar industry based upon dangerously false premise? Uh, it's called a billion dollar industry, Dr. Goffman. Hello. One agency must bear the responsibility for this wrong impression. The United States Atomic Energy Commission. Probably there was no willful wrongdoing. I can't even read that without commenting. I swear it makes me mad. But the Atomic Energy Commission, burdened by Congress with the impossible dual role of promoter of atomic energy and protector of the public from radiation, has historically suffered from false optimism. Uh, it's called Billion Dollar Industry, Dr. Goffman. This is not only true, as we shall see, for radiation hazard issues, but also concerning the economics and capabilities of the nuclear industry. The AEC, of all the agencies we know, was the only one to back the idea that a safe threshold amount of radiation existed. Apparently, it was able to convey this belief not only to the Joint Committee on Atomic Energy, but to the nuclear and electric industries as well. This untenable concept that there does exist some dose in rads or millirads innocuous to humans is a grave danger to the public, as we are seeing today. 
Indeed, it would be difficult to conceive of a more serious situation in a burgeoning industry than to have such appalling misinformation rife with corporate executives and their leading technologists. It is our good fortune that the misunderstanding has been uncovered at last. Well, they just buried it right back up after you said, oh, we don't want to question anybody's integrity. <laughs> Not that I want to call Dr. Doc Goffman a dumbass, but I think he was really a dumbass. It is now possible to halt unsafe growth of the nuclear electricity industry before the errors of the past are compounded. This is a hard chapter for me to read because... Er, we believe the reader will be and should be interested in how we became aware of the widespread lack of understanding of the radiation hazards which characterizes the highest circles of atomic energy. Our realization arose from a direct encounter with the very top of the U.S. Pyramid of Atomic Energy, namely the Joint Committee on Atomic Energy of the U.S. Congress, meaning the military, meaning the war machine. Why do they want nuclear power plants? Because the United States' main product is war, as far back as 1970. We were assigned to evaluate the hazards of atomic radiation by the U.S. Atomic Energy Commission in 1963. It was our job to assess the cost in human disease and death for all sorts of proposed and ongoing nuclear energy programs, including nuclear electricity. In October 1969, we were prepared to present our results on the expected cancer and leukemia deaths for human exposure to various amounts of radiation. We could have presented those results as a, uh, uh, I'm sorry, we could have, we could have presented th these results as the numbers of cancers or leukemias per year, per rat or per millirad of exposure. The most useful basis appeared to us to express this risk was that the amount of radiation, namely 0.17 rads or 170 millirads, which is the currently legal average dose that peaceful atomic energy programs are permitted to deliver to the U.S. population. This dosage 0.17 rads per year for average exposure is the guideline of allowable dosage set by the Federal Radiation Council, an organization established in 1959 by President Eisenhower. This guideline is n in no way suggests that everyone should or does receive 0.17 rads per year. Rather, it states that no individual shall receive more than 0.5 rads per year, nor shall the average dose exceed 0.17 rads. Uh, I think we're way beyond that, especially in the Northern Hemisphere. We're super screwed. Thus, any combination of atomic energy programs could go forward legally, providing these criteria, provided these criteria were met. It is conceivable that atomic energy programs might be irregularly distributed throughout the country with the average exposure in some regions at 0.34 rads and in other regions at 0 rads. If these two regions were of equal size in population, the overall national average would be 0.17 rads, which is perfectly legal under the guidelines. And let it be underscored that no one could be taken to task for allowing radiation exposure to the public up to the full limit of this allowable dose. Our calculations of cancer radiation were presented to an eminent scientific society, the Institute for Electrical and Electronic Engineers in San Francisco on October 29th, 1969. The prediction follows, quote, if the average exposure of the U.S. population were to reach the allowable 0.17 rads per year, there would in time be an excess of 32,000 cases of fatal cancers plus leukemia per year, and this would occur year after year, unquote. 
When we presented this estimate, we anticipated no opposition whatsoever to our scientific findings. Our work showed that previous estimates alongside from early correct estimates by Dr. Linus Pauling were 10 to 20 times too low. The new evidence on radiation-induced human cancer plus leukemia from Japan, from Great Britain, and from Nova Scotia were all now telling us one story. Radiation is a greater factor in cancer leukemia than had been previously realized. New evidence was in. We were simply taking it into account. We expected the nuclear electricity industry and the U.S. Atomic Energy Commission to welcome our report on the cancer plus leukemia risk, especially since the findings were being made available before a massive burgeoning of the nuclear electricity industry. He really is a dumbass. He totally forgot about the billion dollar industry. Back to the book. At that time, in October 1969, we had not given any special thought to the nuclear electricity industry per se. In fact, in our preoccupation with a careful analysis of the hazard per unit of radiation received by people, we thought nuclear electricity, we had thought nuclear electricity one of the most innocuous of atomic energy programs, a view we have now had to radically alter. What surprised us beyond belief was that from all over the country our colleagues in various aspects of nuclear energy, particularly nuclear electricity, expressed their shock and disbelief that such a massive cancer plus leukemia risk could conceivably accompany the exposure at the allowable federal radiation guideline. Many of the people in the nuclear electricity work simply express their disbelief that a federal agency would ever set a guideline that could be associated with such an enormous hazard. They had all been under the illusion that the hazard of the guideline radiation level must be zero or at least so low as to be negligible. One after another, officials of the nuclear electricity industry expressed their opinions that surely something must be wrong with our estimates, although none of them could muster an iota of evidence as to what it could be. Only then were we alerted to the alarming state of affairs. A whole new industry, nuclear electricity, was growing up in the country with all of its experts totally unaware of the true hazards associated with it. We are not speaking about the kind of natural defensiveness a mother shows on hearing unkind remarks concerning her child. This type of defensive reaction on the part of some nuclear electricity spokesman was quite understandable. But the sincere lack of realization by the nuclear electricity industry that there is no proof for safety for any amount of radiation was really disturbing. Our alarm, our alarm reached its most serious proportions a few weeks later when we came to understand that even Congressman Chet Holyfield, chairman of the Joint Committee on Atomic Energy for the U.S. Congress, was totally misinformed concerning radiation hazard. And the Joint Committee on Atomic Energy is the chief source of promotion of the nuclear electricity industry. I think I'm going to stop there, you guys, just because it's 1 o'clock at night and I'm tired. I've been working all day. So, um, look, this is what this says. He who sees all beings in their own self and their own self in all beings loses all fear. Starhawk wrote that in the fifth sacred thing. So we'll pick this up. We're at the uh, top of page 99, chapter 4. Hopefully I'll be able to make it back. Tomorrow is the 14th. I'm mostly done. I'll probably have to read again late tomorrow night, but um, I'm going to make an effort to keep coming back as often as I can. 
put your courage feet on you guys um please do contribute if you can to the gamma spectrometer and or to the children's fund to help the 50 fold children in fukushima uh, I will have the links below for the GoFundMe pages for the Gamma Spectrometer and the fund to help support a few families in Japan. Uh, it's something that I'm going to keep promoting. So, uh, shocking information and dumbassery by Dr. John Goffman, I gotta say. I'm like, no wonder they fucking failed. Whew. But anyways, they know the information and we can be stronger and smarter and better and work to stop these evil monsters because it's not unintentional, as he says there. It is very intentional. Uh, and at this point, we're suffering the consequences of their uh, treacherous acts. So put your courage feet on, you guys. And remember, happiness is resistance, so refuse to be unhappy. <laughs> Ciao.